Hey, everybody, this is Build an Aquarium Workshop. All right, we're back at our 40 gallon uh, reef tank, and we today are going to talk about sea lettuce. So, I brought, I put my uh, plastic basket. If you saw my last video, I talk about using plastic baskets for putting corals in. Uh, you could put an anemone in there, whatever you want to, as long as it fits. All right, so here we are. We used uh, this blue basket, uh, and uh, in there is you see here is some sea lettuce that I took out of this refugium because it is just growing too fast and it was clogging the refugium up. So here's the refugium. I turned the lights on. You can see the sea lettuce. I put the light a little back there. You can see what it looks like. So this sea lettuce is really just seaweed. Okay, they call it sea lettuce. It's great for refugiums. Uh, you could also put it in the tank. It uh, can attach itself uh, or it'll be floating. Uh, and uh, a lot of times it's, uh, you see I have rocks on it because it gets, uh, it gets air bubbles. And um, you can't really see, I already hit them out. So it'll be floating. So I've kind of had to put rock on it uh, to keep it from floating. Uh, or it'll be floating around the tank, which I don't really want. Um, now, keep in mind, this is uh, like an algae, it competes with it, right? And like your Ketomorpha, uh, it's a great alternative to Ketomorpha. A lot of people are using Ketomorpha in the refugiums, uh, but the problem I had was is this really intrusive brown hair algae uh, really really uh, took control here you can see so I stirred up the gravel so you can see the difference between that and then where it is back there uh, if you can see that really really grows super fast I have low level lighting I you know I tried blackout prints didn't work as well but anyway so to compete with it I used the ketomorpha at first but it got all over the ketomorpha and it kept spreading and it just, uh, Ketomorpha. I started growing a lot of it out in a separate tank and I was able to sell it. But the problem uh, is, is I put it, whatever remained, I put it back and this intrusive algae just got all over it and it really just uh, disintegrated to nothing. So I tried, hey, let's try this uh, sea lettuce and uh, get a little piece here for you. You can see it under light. Um, so, you know, it's, bro it's broken off, but you can obviously find it in huge, sheets so it seems more durable uh even if that uh, brown algae gets on it so uh, it's been doing a good job it's been growing for me now and uh, i'll be able to go ahead and uh, sell this uh, stuff uh, into the local shop i just trade it in and uh, get credit for other stuff with refugiums you know you you want to use um so you know either the ketomorpha or sea lettuce there's other types of macroalgae you want to use the macroalgae to keep your uh nitrates in check and your um, phosphate in check okay and that's the two big things that this can really help but it also can compete with algae unwanted hair algae uh, like I have right now and keep that in check as well uh, I just wanted to say this is a great alternative it's very durable it's very tough uh, in your refugiums you can use them in your tanks but remember this uh, if you have herbivorous fish in your reef tank like tangs um, rabbit fish things like that they're gonna you know they're gonna eat this <laughs> so uh, you're not gonna be able uh, to keep it uh, very long and if you want to use it as a food you can it's not cheap uh, this stuff will you know will cost you uh, the whole big sheet of it cost me twenty dollars that's what it looks like it's online as well so uh, the, the keto morpho was a little bit less expensive I think it paid ten and sometimes you can find a, a nice portion of it for fifteen so I gotta pay a little more for the sea lettuce, but I can tell you, for me, it's been more durable. The uh, hair algae I had just, you know, um, was really, really one of the worst hair algae problems I, I have had. And it even took out a couple corals. Uh, the corals have rebounded since, as you can see in the tank, they're doing uh, really, really well. Um, so, you know, but I did lose, uh, one of the things I lost right here, you can see the skeleton was the hammer coral. And really, really disappointed because, you know, if it wasn't for this darn hair algae that I got uh, from a shop, it, uh, you know, I'm used to having hair algaes, uh, brown hair algaes, and matte algaes, and they've never been a problem. Uh, I've had to do lower level lighting because the blackouts didn't really work. It just put a hurting on the corals. And I can bind snails from time to time to, uh, to go ahead and keep the rock nice and clean. And you can see in here I have other issues now. I have green bubble algae and, and aptasias that I'm working on um, to get rid of. But anyway, okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, this is our last look here at the uh, at this uh, wonderful sea lettuce, and you can usually find it at a local shop. If not, you can buy it on eBay. You can get it online, and uh, I'm gonna definitely recommend it because, like I said, uh, if it wasn't for this, I'm sure my hair algae would be even worse. 
Uh, and that was even with weekly water changes. I do weekly water changes and still this brown hair algae, with the lights fully up, the brown hair algae would be instantaneously just growing like super fast, faster than anything could keep up with. Uh, now my lights are really low in this tank, so this lighting right here, they're not even halfway up. Uh, and one of the channels is, of lights is not even on because it just grows so much uh, of this uh, brown hair algae super fast. Uh, and that hair algae just floats everywhere in the tank, you know, it just blows around and then you have it on everything. So anyway, okay. Uh, yeah, if you have any comments, questions about it, let me know. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and do this video to talk about uh, sea lettuce because uh, it can work for you. It is working for me even in these circumstances. Of course, if you have a reef tank and you're not having any algae problems, man, this thing, this stuff would be awesome for you just keeping control. And uh, I first started out in the other 40 gallon breeder. And let me tell you, that tank was in equilibrium for quite some time. I didn't have to even scrub the sides or anything. That's what's happening here. I haven't even scrubbed the glass on this tank. The snails are taking care of it. And of course, this sea lettuce, uh, just keeping uh, the nitrates down. Now, I haven't tested my nitrates. Um, I don't know how low they are, phosphate. Um, I was using, I am using the skimmer and I am using uh, these carbon pads and I do have um, phosphate remover as well. Uh, I'm not using that right now, but uh, I do from time to time just to make sure. And of course, doing water changes at least every other week, um, doing small water changes. I don't do big ones. Uh, so anyway, there it is. All right, folks. Hopefully you like the video. If you do, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more Building Aquarium Workshop, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. We will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, folks.